Hey guys, it's Lorenzo from TYG here reviewing Torchlight 2. Torchlight 2 is an action RPG made by Runic Games featuring offline single player as well as LAN and online multiplayer. When you first load the game, you start in the character creation area where you can choose from four classes. The Engineer is a heavy melee class that also has the ability to summon bots and features strong defensive skills. Read, it's the tank. Berserkers are an aggressive melee class with a wolf theme. Basically, your typical two-handed warrior. The Outlander is a ranged class using bows, guns, and an always equipped glaive to rain down high-range DPS with secondary abilities to debuff and summon. Basically, the rogue. Finally, the Ember Mage is a ranged spellcasting class with a wide array of available attack spells and support abilities focused around the elements of fire, frost, and lightning. Once you've chosen a class, it's time to choose the gender, appearance, and pet of your character. I chose to play an Ember Mage, as glass cannon mages are just what I generally like to play in RPGs. While some might criticize the relatively simplistic customization options available for your character's appearance, I actually really like that, because it makes it fairly pointless for you to spend hours in the character creation screen tweaking a litany of appearance options. I also really like the variety of pets available and their appearance options. They're fun, and have the great merit of not being able to speak to repeat the same three or four phrases a few thousand times while you're playing. Look! More hidden footprints! Once you're happy with your character and pet, you move on to the opening cinematic, which was already featured in one of the trailers. After that, you're basically dropped straight into the action. This gets to one of my major criticisms of Torchlight 2 overall. Leaving aside the gameplay, which as you'll hear later, I really enjoyed, I like some story focus in my RPGs, and I felt like the opening cinematic and early parts of the game didn't do nearly enough to explain what the hell was going on, who I was, where I was, and what the hell I was doing there. This might not be an issue for people who played the first Torchlight, but I would have liked a better introduction to the story, such as it is, because for the first few hours I played, I felt like I had absolutely no earthly idea what the hell was going on. Personally, I don't think it's right that players of a game should feel like they have to turn to a wiki to figure out the basic premise of the story. Now don't get me wrong. I get that the story probably isn't the primary focus of this game, and in truth, I was shortly having too much fun blowing stuff up with spells to worry too much about why. But still, just saying it would have been nice to have a better handle on the setting and a basic outline of the story early on. In terms of graphics, Torchlight 2 features a relatively bright color palette and a fairly cartoonish visual style. Personally, I think the graphics suit the game perfectly and I enjoyed them quite a bit. Just be warned not to expect the metaphorically darker than black and dripping with blood kind of setting often found in RPGs. One thing I did find kind of odd and annoying is that the standard zoom level made me feel like I was too far away from what was going on, but if I zoomed in to be able to see more detail, I felt like I was giving up the tactical advantage of being able to see further around me. As for the music, having played all of Act 1 and part of Act 2 so far, I found the music fairly generic to be honest, but at least not grating or distracting on long play sessions. Plus, some of the enemy sound effects are downright hilarious especially goblins. Let me turn now to the gameplay. First, you should be warned now that I can only speak to the gameplay as an Ember Mage because I don't usually play other classes in RPGs. What can I say? I'm a raging DPS whore. Mind you, as far as I can tell, all of the classes look pretty fun to play, and none of them look like they particularly suck, so most of my thoughts should be generally applicable. The fast base movement speed is great for feeling like you can get around the map reasonably quickly. Combat feels fast paced and action packed, with you tearing through hordes of enemies and blasting away at bosses in a way that encourages you to play the game aggressively and makes you feel like your character is a powerhouse. I really like how customizable the keyboard controls are, with what should be the standard full hotkey row available for bindings. I also really love the sheer volume of enchanted, rare, and unique items that you get as you play. It makes clearing full maps and smashing bosses actually feel rewarding, and it doesn't require you to spend endless hours wheeling and dealing on a virtual eBay to get really awesome equipment. 
I also really love the sheer volume of enchantments that you can get on an item between using socketables and enchanters that can put multiple enchantments on items that go on top of its base enchantments. In addition to this, there's a wide array of bonuses that can go on virtually every item, and at higher levels I think this will promote specialized builds that can capitalize on stacking tons of specific bonuses to best effect. There are, however, a couple of criticisms I have to make on the gameplay, notwithstanding how much fun I've been having playing this game. The first is a lack of clarity on how many skills and item bonuses interact with each other. For instance, which weapon bonuses will proc on spells that don't use weapon DPS, and which ones won't. This has been a bugbear for me since, as you can see from the gameplay footage, I've been building a Prismatic Bolt Ember Mage, and it is often unclear which weapon bonuses will work with Prismatic Bolt. My second issue relates to a failure to promote build diversity in low-level Ember Mages. Basically, my issue is that the Frost and Inferno skill trees don't open up enough options early enough to encourage low-level Ember Mages not to go for a Prismatic Bolt build. Essentially, building towards non-Prismatic builds requires a much larger investment in patience and feeling like you're handicapping yourself until you hit levels those builds start to become much more viable at. This wasn't so much of an issue for me personally, as I tend to optimize my characters to maximize DPS output anyway. So a Prismatic Bolt build was pretty much a no-brainer for me, even if it is a little two-dimensional in its offensive spell selection. Finally, the combination of selectable difficulty levels and a New Game Plus option give you a great ability to customize how much of a challenge you're ready for. I've been playing the game on normal difficulty level thus far, so I could get as far into the game as possible while working on this review. I am looking forward to the added challenge of playing through from scratch on higher difficulty levels once I have the time for that. As I'm sure you can tell, overall I've really enjoyed this game so far. It's an absolutely refreshingly honest and direct take on the action RPG genre that focuses more on making sure you're having a blast killing hordes of enemies and finding as many hilarious references to other media as possible, rather than posting regular blog entries about which skills are going to get beaten to death with a nerf bat next. Plus, Runic Games definitely qualifies as a good guy developer. With their active, open, and friendly interaction with a player base, and the incredibly reasonable $20 price tag for Torchlight 2. Basically, given its price tag, I cannot recommend this game enough. It's fun as hell, and its simple charms make me realize what a lot of games I've played in the last while have been missing. Well, that's it for this review. I need to stop talking about this game so I can get back to playing it. Thanks for watching, and remember to follow us on Twitter at at That's Your Garbage, like us on Facebook, and as always, Check us out at that'syourgarbage.com.